Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I'm Brandy Kitterman. And we are here to equip you and challenge you to, to dare, dare to hear, hear the voice of God. God. Well, welcome today to Dare to Hear the podcast. And today we're going to talk about the importance of prophetic community. Yes. And um, we're really going to talk about um, a new um, year long subscription mentorship. It's a, it's not just mentorship, but it's like a mastermind group. It's a small group. It's an online gathering called the remnant Mm -hmm. and it's really cool and i'm really excited because brandy made this really great graphic (laughs) she's really good at graphic designs like we were working on it one night and i was like no no yes and we're both yes that's it it was so (laughs) excited so but i want to talk about um the importance of prophetic community but not just prophetic community just the importance of community and why that's important and then why um this remnant to this thing that God has given me. So what do you think, Brandy, where should we start? Oh, I don't know. Where should we, should we start? I don't know. Um, but before we get into that, I also have one more announcement. So I've been doing these online dare to hear classes mm-hmm. and we have one week left. Like last night, um, was our seventh week. We have one week left. I'm getting some amazing testimonies. In fact, I'm going to see if some of them will, uh, let me, um, share their testimonies or they'll record something and I can put it out there, but it has been fantastic. I have people from Canada and all across the United States that are taking it. So we're international. Um, exciting. It is exciting. And, but here's the thing is that we've had some new people that have never really operated prophetically. Some people that are operating on the prayer and ministry healing and deliverance teams that wanted to fine tune their hearing people that have ministries of their own people that know that they've got a call, uh, to operate at a prophetic mantle or as a prophet, but they just didn't know how to do it. So we have people all over the board really taking these classes and just some of the amazing testimonies that are coming out. And it was kind of in the midst of this that also God gave me this name, the remnant and told me that he wanted me to do something. So we'll get to that in a minute, but that there's going to be a dear here part two classes, which are going to be six weeks. Yay. And so if you, um, if you've had some experience with hearing from God, uh, these classes would also be for you too. Um, we laid the foundation in part one, but this is kind of the taking it to the next level, a lot of different activations that we'll do together, but I also have six weeks of teaching. And so I just want to just announce this and you can um, go to my website. It won't be live yet. It's going to be in the next week or so, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak fee sneak peek, you've heard it here first, that um, Tuesdays for six weeks, April 19th through May 24th, the cost is going to be $75 for the six week classes, all of the materials, downloads, everything will be um, given to you for that cost. And then you can also, if you miss a class, there'll be the video and the audio of the teaching. So for your choice and, um, but I'm going to give an early bird special of $65. That's going to be through March 22nd. I know I'm super excited. So, um, it, it will hopefully will be on the website. Um, our, my son is moving into his house, so I didn't get it in time for today's podcast, but I'm working on getting it up and live for that, um, registration for that, um, by the weekend. So that next week, when we talk Mm -hmm. about it on the podcast again, it will be ready to go. So be listening to that, but that's coming up and you can sign up with us. And so I'm going to teach on my blessing, which I think is going to be my next book, um, prophetic blessings. And also we talk about craft of prayer and spiritual warfare and some other topics too, but we do a lot of ministry and the prophetic to one another. And so that's really fun. And that's what people have been enjoying. Okay. So back to this remnant and the importance of prophetic community. I've noticed that, um, a lot of people have been coming to me saying, Debbie, I'm feeling isolated. I'm feeling alone. I don't feel like there's any people here. Like I'm a part of a church, but mm. no one really understand the prophetic or, um, God has picked me up and moved me. Hello. We, we fit into that category, right? God's picked yeah. us up and he's moved us, um, out of the place where I had a group of established prophetic, um, individuals that we would get together. We were peers. Um, we fellowshiped, we talked all things prophetic. In fact, so much so that even when my husband who says, no, I don't understand you guys, you just like, who, and I don't really care about all that stuff that, um, he would come sometimes as well and join us, but we would just talk about different things and he would like not interested. And there's just something about having that relationship and that community of people that you're not doing life 
alone, but that you can share with one another. Yeah. And, um, you know, if they've read my book, um, the gift of prophetic encouragement or taken my classes, one of the things the Lord said to me back in, oh gosh, 2008 was it's all about relationship. Yes. Yeah. And so the importance of community, the importance of being in relationship with one another, of course, this relationship between us and God is the most important, but we need each other. And we were built to be a part of a body of people, like-minded people that are working towards a common goal. And so there is so much that is so important about the prophetic community, especially today in our current culture and environment that there's no more, it's not the time of the lone ranger or the lone wolf anymore. Yeah. So, um, so this remnant thing, Brandy, I'm Mm -hmm. so excited about this because, um, it was like, I had a friend and she was like, I feel like the Lord wants to download some blueprints. And this was before. And I talked about this on the podcast last week. Right. And I was like, okay. And then it was really, I just needed to sit. It was before the holidays. And it's like, I needed to sit with the Lord. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm sitting with you. Go ahead and download it. And I was expecting him to like, boom, there it is. Put it in a neon's lights and just flash. And oh, like, only. Oh, I so wish that that would happen, but it didn't happen. Right. But here's what happened. Like I woke up in the morning and, um, and it was like that in between and people were like, well, were you asleep or you're not asleep? It doesn't matter. God was still speaking. And it really wasn't a dream, but it was one of those, um, mm-hmm. like, it was like, it, I still wasn't fully awake. And he's, he said, I want you to to pull together and do an online community for prophetic individuals. And I was like, "Uh uh-huh, sure. Um, (laughs) Okay. Uh, How's this going to work? And you need to give me a name. And he reminded me of something that I had done years before Mm -hmm. when I worked in another ministry and really where I got my start in prophetic ministry. And we had this group where, um, uh, I taught and we ministered prophetically and we talked all things prophetic. What is God saying to you? All of this stuff. And there was a community of people and we came together once a month. Mm -hmm. And I mean, nobody wanted to go home and everybody wanted to stay and come early. And we celebrated, celebrated, you know, life together. Um, And so I said, okay, Lord, but um, I can't call it what it was before. Cause you know, even though it's what I was doing. It was attached to another ministry. And so to honor that, I don't want to do that. Even though she's passed on now, um, it still is separate and it's something that's new. Right. So I went back to sleep and then the Lord gave me the remnant and I was like, what? But this is how cool God is. Okay. So he started talking to me about dare to hear and the next level for dare to hear that I've been teaching individuals to hear, see, and obey the voice of God. That's the tagline for dare to hear, right? Yes. Teaching individuals to hear, see, and obey the voice of God. But the next step of that to build upon that foundation that we've been laying is really to gather together those prophetic individuals from wherever they're at all over the world to come together, to be, um, an online community, of believers that share a common goal of building one another up. And he took me back to first Kings chapter 19, which dare to hear is found of when Elijah had just killed the prophets of Baal. He goes up onto the mountaintop because he's having um, a little pity party because somebody wants to kill him. And yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then God said, I'm going to go up to the mountaintop. I'm going to meet with you. He's not in the wind. He's not right. That's the whole dare to hear thing. That's the the whole song that you get at the end of the podcast that we play. Um, that that is what dare to hear is based off of. But what the Lord said to Elijah at the end of that whole story in First Kings nineteen eleven through eighteen, right? He's like. Okay, now get off this mountain and go find Elisha. And I want you to throw your mantle on him. I want you to anoint him and I want you to basically mentor him, right? And bring him along. But don't you know that you are not the only one? Because that was Elijah's thing. I'm the only one. Where's me? And she wants to kill me. What are you going to do, God? And he's like, you're not the only one. I actually have a remnant of 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to the prophet Baal. And so I was like, oh God, you're so cool because it is really the next level for dare to hear. And we're in a time and a season where technology, which is not my 
favorite at all, <laughs> but technology makes it possible that it doesn't matter what continent, what country, what time zone we're in, that we can gather together yeah. with other people and we can actually build relationship. That's what I'm all about. I'm a relational type person, which most people say that's really odd for prophetic individual slash prophets, Debbie, to be as relational <laughs> as you are. Um, so people are, people are, I know you're going to ask this question, but people are like, is it a mentorship? Yes. And is it a mastermind group? Yes. And is it a small group? Yes. And it's kind of like this new hybrid model that the Lord is really working out. Um, but here's, here's the vision. And what it is, is that it'll be like, uh, two times a month we'll get together and there is an administration fee and it's a commitment for a year. There's a one time, um, that they can pay for the year in advance, or they can, um, sign up to make monthly payments. And I kept the cost as low as I possibly could, but you'll get 90 minute teachings. You'll get a recording in case you miss one of the sessions, you'll get the audio recording of that. You, um, will also, uh, based on who's in the group, we'll talk about having an online platform where there's a private group, private chat, whether it be on, you know, Marco Polo or telegram or Facebook. Cause I know there's a lot of people not on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram in the instant messages. We'll figure that out based on who's there, where we'll have interaction with one another. And then my, my hope is, is that we're creating a safe, can I say that again? Safe online community where we give grace and space, where we become teachable, where mm -hmm. we really have this circle of trust, which I talk about in chapter 14 of this book, submitted, committed, and connected. And as prophetic individuals, that's what we need. We need to be able to talk about, this is what God's saying to me. What is God saying to you? So that we don't feel alone, that we don't feel isolated. God has given me other things for, uh, to come out of this group, this online community called the remnant that we'll be adding to um, over and rolling out with different things about having a platform to help prophetic individuals release prophetic words and um, also just some other things that he's done. Those are kind of in the future, vision, looking, but it all comes back to relationship and community. Yeah. And um, I wanted to talk about the importance of community with you because um you know, we've been in this journey for, well, you for almost a year Yeah, because you landed here in South Carolina a year ago. Yep. In the middle of March, right before my birthday. Uh -huh. And you were the first one that came out here mm -hmm. and being a part of a community and then not having anyone except for our friend who you were living with. So there was that. So you weren't all the way alone and isolated. Right. Thank goodness. Yeah. But talk to me about like, how did that feel from going from community to not having community well it was weird that's for sure it was hard i'm i, I mean you know me i'm a very people person oh, i like to talk to people she's the same one through and through <laughs> um and so when i came here like the only person that i really knew or could talk to was our friend our that friend you, that you were yeah yeah that with. i stayed she, with and um and she's great loved her yeah. love her yeah she's fantastic um and I, I really enjoyed, you know, staying with her, but I went church hopping almost instantly trying to find that same community. Um, and it was really hard at first, especially here. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you say prophetic and people are like, excuse what? me. Yeah. Or they're looking for that third eyeball. Literally. And I'm like, Okay well clearly this isn't it <laughs> yeah and then we've learned that the word pentecostal and charismatic means something completely yeah. different here than it did back in you know the pacific northwest who knew so and we're like oh no 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 that's not what we mean we just mean that we love the freedom of the spirit and we go with what the spirit says and we like prophetic worship and they're like the huh so <laughs> but but you did find a place but i did i did end up finding a place and I, I, I still haven't looked back, you know, it's like, clearly I found my place and like, that's where I needed to be, you know? Yeah. And, um, I'm still, you know, working on getting connected there fully. And I drug my brother and sister-in-law yeah. and they're going there and they love it. And mm -hmm. 
they're getting connected. Yeah. And yeah. But there's something about community um, that is so important. And and in fact, the, the Lord really talks about that. And so we, he, we're not meant to do life, life alone. We're not. We're not meant to go through this life alone. Like yeah. there's a reason that people literally go crazy when they don't have human contact. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, it is so true. And, and especially, I mean, like people are like, oh, you're sanguine. And I actually, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm that one that like you can be on and enjoy being around people, but you recharge by being alone. That's, yeah. totally, I, don't, I don't remember what it's called, but, but there is something about being in that community where there's corporate worship or there's corporate talking or there's corporate, um, just fellowship with one another. And I think the thing that's been hardest and that I've really in the, probably the last three months with some of the people, my coaching clients that come to me, they're like, I feel always loaded. I feel alone. Like nobody understands the prophetic. I can't find a church here that understands what I do. Or they look at me like, like, who are you and what is this? And so um, that I realized that what I had back in Olympia that I put together with one of my, my mentors really um, was we would get together on, um, you know, two times a month when we found out I was leaving, it was every week we were getting together and we would talk about what God is doing in our life and um, prophetically and, and, and the opportunities to step out and to do ministry and the different aspects of what involved of being a prophetic individual, because sometimes we talk a different language and people don't understand us. Yeah. And it's not a strange language. It's just like, this is what God did. And this is how it's exciting. Or this is how God spoke to me and really having people come together to, um, champion one another and to really be submitted, committed and connected. And so there are a few things that you have to ask yourself if this is right for you. And that is, can you be teachable? Can you give grace and space? Can you come under authority? Can you be submitted, committed, and connected to a group of individuals? Um, can you be kind, right? Yeah. As we come together. So the prophetic has, you know, got a lot of bad rap. The fruit loops. Yes. And the nuts. Yes. Yes. And, um, I'm all about healthy prophetic. I really believe that if we get healthy, then we can model a healthy prophetic and we can actually reintroduce it to the church in a healthy way. That's why the book, the gift of prophetic encouragement was written. Um, but originally when it came out at milk, milk eggs prophecy, um, before I got the book with chosen, uh, book deal with chosen, it was about how do you operate in the prophetic and work with the pastors with inside of the church. Mm -hmm. And how can you, how can we work together as prophetic individuals and fit inside this, um, church organization yeah. and how can we be an added member of the community? And so I'm really excited about this. And so I hope you guys would consider doing that and um, joining us for the remnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any thoughts from you mm -hmm. about it? I was really excited. So, you know, I was like, okay, Lord, well, where else besides Elijah and Elisha are we talking about the remnant? And so he um, took me to Romans 11, where he really talks about the remnant again. And he reminds people, you know, don't, don't, don't forget about what happened with Elijah. And then it was the Lord saying, but what God was God's reply. I've kept myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Um, but if it is by grace, it's no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise grace would no longer be grace mm -hmm. and really talking about coming together and operating in the grace of the prophetic as a community where we will learn and we will grow and we will share and we will build relationship and we will be there for one another. And so it's, it's like a hybrid model of anything that I've ever seen before. And maybe there is something out there that exists and I just don't know about it, but I want to invite everybody to come and join us because there really is something like your dad and I haven't found the church for us. My kids have, they love it. It's just a little too far for us. Um, it's a drive. It's quite the drive and we want to be, you know, but that doesn't mean that just because we don't go to a local church that we're not committed, submitted or connected because there's right. a lot of other things that we can do. And so this is one of the alternative ways that the Lord said, Hey, you can, you can do this. Um, because, our community needs us, but we also need other people to understand our language, right? We need people to understand, oh, 
God spoke to me and this is what he said. And I'm like a little hesitant to step out, but can you give me confirmation or the Lord gave me this word? Can, can you, cause what does it say? Submit the prophecies to the prophets and they will judge them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so how do we do that? How do we know that what we're getting is a pure word from the Lord? How can we have a, a safe environment in which to fellowship and have relationship and also learn and grow at the same time in our prophetic gifting and our prophetic calling. And some of us are prophetic mantle. Yeah. So the importance of community that is this week. So Brandy and I still also um, in the coming weeks are going to talk about the importance of ministering to children in the prophetic. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for that because that's coming up. And I got some really great interviews with some great people, some guests that are brand new, and then some guests that are returning. And so mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that. So I've got Jennifer Ives, I've got Hakeem Collins is coming back. I got um, a couple of new ones that are coming. Joshua Giles is coming. Coming. Um, Jack Countryman, and he's a brand new guy mm -hmm. that um, actually has been around in the publishing industry for a really long time, but I just, um, will be interviewing him. So we have some really good things coming up, but just to remind you, the remnant is going to start in April. You can go to the website, debbiekitterman.com slash shop. It should be right there at the top. And, um, provided my website tech people get it up and running. They told me it would be live today, um, Wednesday, March oh, nice. 2nd. Yeah. They told me it would be live. So if it's not there, trust me, um, the information will also be, um, in the show notes on the website under the podcast tab. So you can go there and you can see it there, but, um, really get in on that early bird special. It is an annual commitment, but you can pay one time for a cheaper cost if, and it's basically you're getting two months for free. So you're paying for 10 months, but you're getting a uh, 12 months of the, um, remnant yes. and then, um, or you can pay monthly. And so that cost is a little bit more and it's just helping to offset some of the administrative costs and some of the, um, stuff for the different things and the programs that I have to purchase to be able to do this stuff. But I'm really excited about that because going back to what the Lord said, relationship, it's all about relationship, Debbie, and being a relational person. I miss that connection with other like-minded prophetic people. There's not a lot here where we live. And so I'm yeah. constantly calling people and the Lord's challenged me just because you're not in a physical location where you can see somebody face to face doesn't mean that you can't have good connection and good relationship and be in fellowship with one another. Yeah. So it is important. It is important. And, uh, you know, like that's why I have a whole chapter dedicated to being submitted, committed and connected, because that's one of the things that there's this circle of trust really that we have to have with one another as prophetic individuals, really as believers. I mean, let's, let's get real. Um, there's a lot of disunity in the church. Like we're divided in factions and we're divided in uh, denominations when God has called us to be a body, one body with working parts, um, and coming together in relationship and fellowship. And there is, it is so important that we mm -hmm. be in community. So any final thoughts from you today? Nope. Nope. Well, thank you for sharing your story mm -hmm. uh, because I think that that will challenge some people and help some people, yeah. you know, to really find their group of people because it yeah. does make a world of difference. It makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Cause I can tell, I can tell um, when you first came and, you know, even though you were just living with our friend and she was great, that there was something missing. And then when you found it and you hopped from place yeah. to place to finally find it, that when you made that connection, things shifted inside of you, because what happens is, is iron sharpens iron and we come together. And so, you know, maybe there's a group of people where you live that you guys can get together on a regular basis too. Um, I would love to see out of this remnant that there are small pockets of people that get together locally that meet face to face, even though we'll be meeting online. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm really excited about that. So, well, I think that's it for today's podcast episode. So we're off to help um, my son move and paint and do all kinds of things in his new home. So we're really mm -hmm. excited about that. Yay. Yes. Um, so thank you for listening to dare to hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. 
I'm Debbie Kidder. And I'm Brandy Kidderman. If you guys were encouraged in any way, we want to know about it. You can send us an email at info at dare the number two here.com. Um, wherever you're listening or watching, go ahead and like, and subscribe. So that you hear more, tell your friends. Mm -hmm. And you can go check out uh, the Dare to Hear Part 2 classes and the Remnant and online community oh, yeah. and the information about that at debbiekitterman.com slash shop. It'll also be in the show notes. And it will be in the show notes. So you can just click on that. And if you have a topic that you want us to take on, feel free to email us at info at dare the number two here.com. Until next week, God bless and goodbye. Bye. Fall of the